Hello, everyone, and welcome to Magdalene Chapel on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're so glad that you're with us. Our Mass intention is for Ray Sinagra, and our celebrant is Father Peter. Just a reminder, welcome blankets still are being assembled by Thrive. A flyer describing what is needed is outside Magdalene Chapel and explains how your knitted or crocheted eight inch squares can become a part of a welcome blanket for immigrants who are resettling in our area. When you complete those, if that's what you choose to do, just let P Father Peter have them and he'll make sure they get to thrive. Have a wonderful day. We gather together this morning as a people of faith to celebrate the Eucharist. We come to the altar of our God to offer him praise and thanksgiving for all that we have received, most especially for the blessing he has created each one of us to be. And as we are nourished here and renewed in his word and sacrament, we go forth from here to continue our mission to renew the world in the light and love of Christ. With joy we come together as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Amen. your spirit. My dear friends, coming together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, all of us are aware of times we have not lived and loved as Christ invites. Our task is not to dwell in those times, simply to open our hearts and allow our God to enter in with his great gift of mercy and compassion. You call all people to salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You grant us your forgiveness and fill us with new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You send us forth as your friends and disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us together praise our God. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the living God and Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may come to attain eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy, are in sincerity, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? 
Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive because you act ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching the disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to others, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed the child in their midst, and putting his arms around the child, said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Both my sister and I are products of the service industry, uh, not just because my father for 35 years worked for Screw and Bolt Corporation that made the screws and bolts that hold our automobiles together, and that my mother, her first job coming from a small town in Ohio to the big city of Pittsburgh, uh, was the upstairs maid for the Woodside at their estate, which many of you may remember, at least if you live in the North Hills, as the Stone Mansion restaurant. Uh, and then from there, my mother moved in with her older sister who worked at a bank in Woods Run, and they lived in an apartment above the bank. My aunt went to work every day at the bank, and my mother went across the street to Babanek's Bar and Grill, where she was a waitress. And the reason I say my sister and I were products of the service industry is because, literally, my dad went there for lunch. And even if my mother waited on their table, she would take their order, and then just go across the restaurant and stare at my father, but she wouldn't talk to him. So Mrs. Babanek, a very stubborn and loving German woman, sent my dad a beer one day and said it was from my mother. And he got up to go over and talk to my mother. Thank you, God. That's how I got here. <laughs> Literally, a product of the service industry. The gospel today is truly about service. And every disciple of Jesus is called to use their gifts and talents to serve others. Literally, the gospel today demands that we put others before ourselves. And that's difficult. It's not that we don't take care of ourselves or fulfill our own needs, but the gospel demands that every person in our lives is worthy of our service. 
It may be that we have to help them find a job. It may be that we have to help them find food and shelter. It may be that we just walk with them on their journey. It might be the gift of our prayers. But we are all called to that service and its service above and beyond. It's a service that doesn't expect repayment. It's a service that simply gives and gives without running out. And we all have our unique gifts and talents. And that's what we need for our sisters and brothers. You know, right now in our country, we've made vaccination a political thing. Pope Francis has told us it's not political, it's moral. We have a moral obligation if we're a pro-life people to be vaccinated to protect our children, to protect others, and protect ourselves. It's an act of service to be vaccinated. We have to end the divisions in our country. We have to work together. We're not red and blue. We're the United States of America. And as long as we let our political agendas take precedence over the gospel agenda, we're not going to find that unity. And that's what we need more than anything else, to work together for the common good. That's what our freedom is. It's a responsible freedom to work together for the common good. And so Jesus tells us, if you want to be first, you've got to be last. And if you want to be my servant, you will serve those people I put in your life. Because that's what we're called to do, to be a people of service. And the wonderful wisdom writing of the New Testament, the letter of James tells us, jealousy and selfishness are disastrous. You know, there's always going to be people in the world that have more than we have and less than we have. Rather than spend all our time consumed with jealousy over who has what and who doesn't have what, <laughs> why don't we work for equality? Why don't we work to bring people together so that these divisions don't exist? Because the wisdom that God gives us is peaceable. It works for peace, actively seeks to make people whole again. The scriptural definition of peace is wholeness which means we're in right relationship with God, ourself, one another, and creation. A lot of people like to leave that creation part out. Those four things have to be in right order for that peace. It's gentle. Our service is given with gentility, not to lord it over people. It's full of mercy. It's constant. It's sincere and it's sown in righteousness and peace. And so today, we get a bold reminder that to follow Jesus, the suffering servant, to follow Jesus, God's ultimate servant, we too are called to lay down our lives in some way. And whatever that is, that gift of service makes the world a better place and helps us fulfill our mission to receive not only Christ, but to receive every person as a gift of God to us, to receive every person in light of their full human dignity, to receive every person, no matter the color of their skin, the denomination of their faith, no matter what their relationship is, we are called to serve. Because when we serve, we make a difference. When we serve, we become Christ for one another. When we serve, we show them not only Christ, but the love of our provident God, who takes care of us so that we may take care of one another. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us profess that faith that we live and share each day using the Apostles' Creed, as is our tradition. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now in that faith, we turn to our loving and provident God with these prayers for ourselves, our world, and our church. Our response is, provident God, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be servants of one another, particularly of those in need, and thus bear witness to God's love for everyone, we pray. Provident God, hear our prayer. For the poor and powerless in our society, that we may hear their voices, understand their pain, and humbly walk alongside them through life's challenges, we pray. Provident God, hear our prayer. For the grace of conversion, that God will help us curb our passions of envy and the desires to possess, so that we will be free to live peaceably and with gratitude for all that God has given us, we pray. Provident God, hear our prayer. For all who have been impacted by hurricanes, storms, floods, and wildfires, that God will strengthen them, remove the obstacles which they encounter, and guide them to the assistance that they need, we pray. Provident God, hear our prayer. For greater recognition of the harm being done to the earth, that world leaders and each of us take meaningful steps to curtail the environmental damage of our planet and work to protect the poor and vulnerable from its effects, we pray. Robin God, hear our prayer. For refugees and immigrants, that those who have fled violence and starvation may find safety, new communities of acceptance, and the resources needed for their lives, we pray. Robin God, hear our prayer for healing and strength, that the good news of the dying and rising of Jesus may bring hope to the sick and support to those who care for them, we pray. Father God, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for, for Ray Sinagra, for whom this Mass is being offered, that he may be enjoying the fullness of God's love, we pray. Father God, hear our Loving God and Father, once again we entrust our prayers to your providential care. We are confident that you will always do what is best for us, so that we may do what is best for you, ourselves, and one another. Fill our hearts with the spirit of service, that we may bring your light and love to all we need. To do this, we ask that you hear and answer our every prayer, which we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that the gifts we have prepared will be a pleasing, acceptable offering to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our blessing and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our light, our Lord and Savior. His death we celebrate with great love. His resurrection we confess with a living faith. And his coming again in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints in heaven, we praise you now and forever, as without end we acclaim and sing. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks. Giving the cup to the disciples said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, our provident God, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of faith, hope, and love, together with Francis, our Pope, our Bishop David, and all the bishops, 
with the consecrated and religious laity, clergy, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that one day with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her devoted and loving husband Joseph, the Apostle Mary Magdalene, Marie de la Roche, Wilhelm Kettler, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may be co-heirs of eternal life. May praise you and glorify you with Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a gesture of that peace. This is Jesus. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy and blessed are we who share the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
as we prepare for our mission to go out as faithful servants of our provident God. Let us pray for the gift of peace in our hearts, in our homes, our community, our nation, our world, and our church. Lord, Lord be, be with, with us, so that, so that we, we might, might not look forward in fear to the changes in life. life. We, we are, are your very own, own, and we believe that you will lead us safely through all things. And, and when we cannot stand it, you will carry us in your arms. May we not fear what will happen tomorrow. You are our everlasting parent who cares for us today, and we believe that you will care for us every day. Lord, either shield us from suffering or give us the unfailing strength to bear it. May we be at peace and so as I all anxious thoughts and imaginations. In, in this peace, we know that the love of God surrounds us, the light of God shines in us, the Spirit of God hovers over us, the presence of God unfolds in us, and wherever we are, God is. Through Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, family like us, we ask all of this now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you have renewed with your word and sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. I want to thank Rebecca for coming back for us today. Uh, so we would have music for our taping. Um, we have a substitute coming for the next two weekends as we continue the hiring process. So this will be Rebecca's last liturgy with us. Uh, but once again, we thank her for the gift of her music, the gift of her ministry, and the gift of her most especially. And you know, in the Catholic Church, we have a tradition that you celebrate for eight days, for eight days called an octave. And today is a great day, but by you, get this, we'll still be in the octave. Uh, today is Father Jack's birthday, so if you would please join with me in celebrating this prophetic priest, this great man, this great person, on this his birthday. Let us go forth in joy for peace, to love and serve our God and one another. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. You also.